Good evening. This is CTV News for Friday, June 5th. I'm Byron Scott. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, it took jurors just about two hours to reach a guilty verdict against Charles Smith. The 33-year-old was charged in the death of his four-year-old son, and he learned his fate today. Denise Douglas has the details. Jurors did not deliberate very long. Like you said, about two hours to find Charles Smith guilty. Guilty on seven counts, including vehicular manslaughter for the accident that Smith caused that left his four-year-old son dead and girlfriend's daughter injured. You can see video released just today of part of that crash in which Smith was driving fast and ultimately hit a wall. After the verdict, the boy's mother said her life will never be the same. It's hard. Um, I don't sleep at night. Um, I think about him all the time. Um, I deal with my daughter. She has a traumatic brain injury. Um, we both have PTSD. I don't like driving at nighttime. Um, I don't want to say I feel old, but I feel like I think about life before it happens. The prosecution maintained that Smith was high on PCP at the time of the crash on Bladingsburg Road adding that the outcome of the case today will serve as a lesson to others about substance abuse. I mean, certainly there, there is a lesson to be learned here from, from everyone about the dangers of driving under the influence of any substance, uh, you know, when you get behind the wheel. But there has to be a punishment. There has to be consequences for the actions. We certainly understand that the, the victim in this case uh, is, is a four-year-old child who was Mr. Smith's son, uh, and certainly there's suffering there. And that's why we say there really are no winners uh, in this case. You have two families who are devastated, uh, and you have the loss of a child. But when, when you do something like that. We, we have laws. We have to enforce those laws and there has to be a punishment. Smith is facing up to 10 years in prison when he's sentenced. I'm Denise Douglas, CTV News. And Smith is scheduled to be sentenced in August. Well, we have an update to a story we shared with you yesterday. Prince George's police have arrested 22-year-old Anthony Myers of Bowie late last night in connection with the death of 18-year-old Devante Scott. Now, according to law enforcement, the two men were acquaintances who apparently got into an argument. Myers is being charged with first-degree murder. This is the first murder reported in Bowie this year. And Prince George's police are beefing up patrols in school zones across the county. The target speeders, the equipment, brand new cameras. Many of us have seen these in school zones, mounted speed cameras nestled at the side of the road. For us, we're already seeing a huge uh, reduction. Uh, we've dropped over 90,000 violations just from uh, 2013 to 2014. And while these aren't going away anytime soon, motorists will soon start to see these handheld laser cameras. Police shut down a portion of Sheriff Road and Landover this morning for a demonstration. The results of this test is that the police vehicle is traveling in lane one at 49 miles per hour at 440 feet away when the officer captured the event and that they were pointing at that police cruiser uh, while it was in operation. And I see how these cameras are changing attitudes in Prince George's County. John Townsend of AAA Mid-Atlantic says the new handheld devices are a game changer. With the fixed cameras on a trailer, you get burned by them once, you know where they are. This is a game changer because you can never anticipate where the cameras will be or where a police officer will be with that camera on any given morning. The cameras record the vehicle's speed and then photograph the rear of the car to get the license plate. Then a ticket is sent in the mail. There's no secret in this. The pilot program will last 30 days. Two cameras will be deployed and will cover more than 140 school zones across the county. If you're caught in the camera sight over those 30 days, you'll get a warning. After that, it's a ticket. We're going to use it where the community has asked us to, in smaller uh, side streets that are designated school zones, but that we can't put a traditional box style or trailer style um, uh, speed camera because of landscaping issues or, or aesthetics, that kind of thing. And again, the pilot program lasts 30 days. Tickets will cost you $40. 
Well, last week, the Prince George's County Council passed its budget, fiscal budget of 2016. It remains though unclear whether the county executive will sign it. And joining us now to discuss the nearly $3 billion package is County Council Chair Mel Franklin. And welcome here to the program. Well, it's always good to be with both of you, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, we know that what had originally been proposed was nearly a 16% increase. Um, that was scaled back to about 8% from the county executive. And, and then that all changed this past week. Bring us up to date. Right, and so during this entire budget process, the county council really had uh, some some serious thinking to do, a lot of listening. Uh, we had to weigh <clears throat> some serious questions about weighing, on the one hand, uh, a potentially a 15.6% increase in property taxes to invest in education, but on the other hand, weighing the cost of that to households, uh, to businesses. We decided that a 15.6% increase in property taxes just wasn't affordable, uh, particularly because residents are still coming out of the foreclosure closure crisis, the recovering economy. Uh, we also have our business community who, who was just really starting to get some momentum. We're trying to create new economic destinations in the county. Uh, and we believed that a 15.6% increase in property taxes could stymie that growth just as that momentum is starting. So instead, we looked at the budget and we said to our residents, uh, what are your views about the way your dollars are being spent? And the, the feedback we got was that there was there's a widespread lack of confidence about how existing dollars are being spent. And so the county council had to look at that and consider, is it right to ask residents to uh, pay that much of a significant increase more when they don't have confidence in how their existing dollars are being spent? As a result, we reduced that 15.6% to 4%. Now, you may want to ask, well, why 4%? Where did that number come from? Well, in 2012, the state of Maryland uh, decided that it needed to, to address its own structural deficit. That's a fancy way in government of saying we're spending more money than we have, and we're doing it every year. Uh, so the state decided to shift a portion of the teacher pension costs to the counties without the money to pay for it. We call that an unfunded mandate. Uh, well, they did tell us what we'll allow you to do is to go above your property tax limits uh, to pay for uh, funding the school system now with this new burden. So that cost to us this year is about $30 million in teacher pension costs. Next year it'll be $42 million. The 4% increase will help offset that additional cost so that that money that the county has to give to the school system won't just simply be going to teacher pension costs, we'll actually be able to go to the classroom. So I was in council chambers last week and all of you guys spoke and the sense that I got, even with the 4% and 1% sure. telecommunication, what it was very, very difficult even for, for that to be, to be passed. You guys talked about sleepless nights. It was nights. a tough call, yeah. even for 4%, because the feedback we got from residents was that they really are struggling to come out of this uh, housing crisis. Uh, and this economy is still depressed home value. So many residents are still underwater. So it's a, it's a very difficult economic time to ask uh, residents to, to fork over 15.6% more in property taxes. So we came to the conclusion that not only are we going to reduce that to 4%, we're also going to put in some measures to, to increase confidence in how dollars are currently being spent. We're going to do a performance audit mm -hmm. of the Prince George's County Public Schools for the first time in 18 years. That's going to design to one, help us understand better how effectively dollars are being spent and also cre create more confidence amongst the public. We're also telling each agency to set aside 2% of your budgets in the contingency because we have a structural deficit at the county mm -hmm. where we're overspending our allocated budget on a year-to-year -year basis. We as a county council, our job is to be fiscal stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. We're basically going to say to the, our agencies, that 2% could be returned during the year, mm -hmm. but we want to monitor how spending is going throughout the year so that we stay within our means as a county government. And now, this was not a unanimous decision. It was 6 Correct. to 3. You yourself voted in favor of the 4%. Um, right. Do you expect any political repercussions for the people that actually voted for in favor? I, I actually think people will appreciate the fiscal responsibility uh, tact that we took. Uh, instead of a 15.6% increase, I think they appreciate the burdens that are put on the county, unfortunately by the state, uh, as to why we needed to do the 4%. But I think they'll more importantly appreciate the fiscal discipline measures that we've now put in place. Uh, we're also, uh, put in, we've also put in a piece of legislation to require that 50% of future MGM National Harbor revenue has to be dedicated to education. That was to create some accountability behind the message that residents heard when the whole debate about gaming was going on. Folks said that that money was going to help education. 
we want to make sure that gaming doesn't become like the lottery thought of, where money was generated, but it didn't make it to education. And that starts in 2016, right? In fiscal, actually yeah. fiscal year 2017. 15. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank right. you for having me. And, okay. and just a quick note. Do sure. you expect the county executive to sign off on this? I don't know. Uh, we haven't gotten a word about that yet. Uh, I hope so, uh, but I'm not sure. Can he line item items? Yes. He can. Yes, he and, can. and then the council will have the option to override. If we, for example, if he vetoed the 4% um, increase and we didn't override it, it would default back to his 15.6% increase. So it's an important decision about whether uh, he's going to sign uh, the budget or not. All right, okay, we'll be again. keeping up on that in the future. Thank you. <laughs> and that vote uh, will come up on June 16th. The Baker has uh, to that date to sign that veto or to sign into law. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott. Come